The system we use to learn runes relates to their nature, and their nature is family, kinship-like. There are 24 runes in the Elder Futhark. We're studying just the Elder Futhark. The Younger Futhark, as well as the Anglo-Saxon Futhark, have a later origin and are associated with the introduction of runes into Christianity. We won't be studying them as a system because it is not one. When we will possibly reach the point of studying gods and runic formulas, there, in some cases, runes of the younger Futhark may be used, but quite rarely. I'm not very fond of using them, and I will tell you the reasons for it a little bit later. <laughs> so, the elder Futhark consists of 24 runes, and these 24 runes are divided in three ets. If translated, et means kin, or family, et or at, three families of eight runes. Going forward, aside from this day, we will have eight more lessons. The first et, the first family, represents the natural forces that unveil your individual potential, that which is innate to you, something that you already have. Every person comes provided with basal forces, like constants, and they are written out in the first set. If you have a right to something, this means that you can use this right, you just have to manifest to awaken this right within you, allow it to be. Someone who is unaware of his inborn rights is sometimes forced to buy his natural rights from this world, paying triple the price. And that is incorrect, not fair, as Scandinavian gods would say. It goes against good conscience. It is not right. If nature gave something to someone by right, if gods gave him something initially, it means that he should have it until he himself gives it up, pawns it, sells it, or gives it away as a gift. Until then, it is all inside of him. And even if it happened that you've lost some of your natural rights by inexperience or by accident, the first set of runes will certainly help you to awaken these rights and forces. However, it is not as easy. Are you ready for these rights to be awakened? Are you ready to accept this force and to understand that as of that moment your responsibility level will be a bit higher than that of a servant of God? If yes, then you are entering this process openly and knowingly to awaken the forces that were invested in you, to combine all into one whole, so that you can become one singular whole unit. The last rune of the first Tet, Vunyo, is not so much the rune of joy, as much it is the rune of wholeness. It is a rune of joy for people who, so to say, are below the warrior caste, if we express ourselves tolerantly. Tolerance is in fashion nowadays, as to you want to scarf it down but can't. People of the castes below the warrior caste will perceive it as the rune of joy. A warrior, however, will perceive it as the rune of wholeness. What is the difference? The difference lies in its magical manifestation. We will be working with it for quite some time, and will be discussing it for quite some time. But for now, I would just like to show you the importance of the difference in the perception and interpretation of runes. Wholeness implies that in this world, your consciousness represents a complete form, meaning a unit. When someone is whole, he has no need to collect missing pieces from the surrounding environment, meaning clinging to people, grabbing the first ones available who could in one way or another compensate him to a whole. Because if you are not whole, the egregorial system itself will start to compensate you by giving you a stable partner, so to say. Whether this partner fits you in any other ways, such as according to his mental, energetic or biological qualities, that makes no difference. He completes you to a whole and that's it. The system has fulfilled its function. That is its algorithm, to make a tattered object whole. So it did complete you to a whole and you can go ahead and suffer from this addition for half of your life. A warrior of himself is a loner. And that means that he should be initially whole. He should initially have no need to complete himself by anything to a whole. And this means that Vunyo, as the rune of wholeness, gives you exactly that quality. How can you make yourself whole? By uniting within yourself all the natural forces that you have. 
They originally represent one unit. If you awaken them within you, then you are all set. But it all does not quite stop there, because if all would be so simple and we would be so easily satisfied just by the first et, Odin would have given us eight runes instead of 24. And since he has given us 24 of them, then something should continue to happen. All processes start to happen particularly on the second ed. I want to tell you that the second ed for those who are learning runes is usually the most difficult. Why is that? Because it opens up the problems within the consciousness that forced you to lose your rights in the first place, to give away your rights, to share your rights, to comply with the fact that the system will bring you to a whole according to its own rules and not yours, meaning making you dependent, deficient from the viewpoint of the system. Runes of the second debt detect glitches within your consciousness, reveal them and allow you to handle the issue on your own. And how can a person deal with these issues on his own? By living through it, by meeting his shortcomings head on, by approaching his pain head on, by performing opposite actions, ritual actions, something that goes against one's past habits, past convictions of going around the issue. You won't have to do all that on the second debt, but you will have to pull out your fears, your resentments, your limitations, as well as your needs, your necessities, and to comprehend your fate. And only after that, come to the realization what it is for you, for a warrior, what is your victory algorithm. And that would be the last rune of the second debt, rune Sowilo. The runes of the second debt imply forces which you do not yet possess, but they must be cultivated, and they must be cultivated necessarily and inevitably, because without them you may perhaps remain a warrior, but will never be a victorious warrior. And in our task, surviving is not as important as to be victorious. And only once the forces have awakened and the qualities for the correct realization have been manifested, the most effective, the strongest of them all, that is, when we will be moving on to the third et. The third et represents the finished result. And we will not be receiving them, but we will be earning them, and will be applying them to the surrounding reality, while understanding that a teaching has a right to existence only if there are results. Learning for the sake of learning is not as interesting, wouldn't you agree? Learning for the sake of learning is too foolishly a waste of your time, really. And time is a valuable asset, an asset of big, great value. And you will understand its value by learning the runes, that there is actually not anything more valuable than time, that everything else is a chimera. Someone who says that time isn't valuable is trying to take this asset from you, replacing it with something else, for example, the asset of money. Money is an asset, isn't that true? Spend more time? Get more money. Our relationships are an asset. Spend time on a relationship, you will have a relationship. Meaning that it forces you to exchange gold for bread and water. The price is not right. Time is always more valuable. Time is the only thing that we possess, not just by right, but by our nature. When gods were creating people, they placed them here in the world of Midgard which is signified by the Yera rune, the rune of time. And man is, in essence, such small generator of time. Man produces time, brings it into circulation, into the world, and this time causes something to wind up. All worlds work on an operating system that we make here together, in the middle world, the world of Midgard. But we will be talking about this quite a lot in its own time. I will be telling you about each world from different viewpoints, occult, literary and program-wise. I will also be telling you about the gods who support certain worlds. I will tell you about the forces that tie these worlds together, as well as the laws according to which these worlds connect together. It isn't a fast process because the Scandinavian tradition in itself is incredibly rich. The fact that they managed to preserve the tradition and continue to do so until this day is our great luck. Why is it a great luck for us? Perhaps we don't even have any relation to the Scandinavians, including blood relation. But you see, once upon a time, we were connected. Our gods and their gods, yes, they were connected by family bonds. Moreover, 
Our Tsars derived from the Varyags, although they try to convince us of exactly the opposite. But trying to convince us is pointless. Blood is blood. All pagan gods were connected together by one and the same code, by one program, by one and the same intention. Every one of them, Celts, Scandinavians, Slavs, everything that related to paganism and the pagan culture, all is connected, everything is connected together. The Slavs, however, to our great disappointment, did not preserve their tradition, but the Scandinavians did. Sometimes I joke by saying that Slavs wrote down their memory on birch bark, which is quite flammable. Whereas the Scandinavians are a tough, stubborn folk, they did not like to do things twice, so they did their best the first time around by etching theirs into the stone, and stone can't be burned. All kidding aside, each joke contains some truth. They actually did preserve their legends and traditions. And Iceland, for example, is the only country in Europe where paganism is considered to be an official religion. Iceland is the only country that would block certain roads because those roads are used by local spirits, fairies, elves and elves. They block the roads or go around a hill in order not to disturb the side. And they do it not just for fun, but according to their beliefs. And if you have a chance to visit this incredible island, do take that chance, because it is truly out of another reality, out of another universe.